many libertarian men are fairly ignorant about women's issues. Some of them are outright hostile to feminism because they've never bothered to find out what it is. Hi, I'm Tim Cavanaugh for Reason TV. Sharon Presley's a foundational figure in the libertarian movement. She's the co-founder of Laissez-Faire Books. She is currently the executive director of the Association of Libertarian Feminists and Resources for Independent Thinking. She's the author of countless books, most recently, Standing Up to Experts and Authorities. Sharon, thank you for thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. I'm glad to be here since I remember reason from the time it was a mimeograph sheet. Can you give us a little idea of what libertarian feminism is? Well, like other kinds of feminism, we believe that women should be judged as individuals and not on the basis of their gender. And we believe that uh, gender stereotypes have uh, gotten in the way of both men and women just simply being the individuals they want to be. But the difference between libertarian feminism and other kinds of feminism is we just don't think that the state is very helpful in achieving that end and that we need to achieve that end through means that are consistent with our goals. If our goal is to get rid of patriarchy, then we have to get rid of government patriarchy as well as family patriarchy. In your view, has the movement moved forward or are we still where we were? It has moved forward. Obviously, there are a lot more people who call themselves libertarians today. And the word libertarian actually appears in the news from time to time, which was certainly rarely the case in the 70s. So that's the good news. And there are all, all kinds of organizations that have sprung up since then and uh, the promoting libertarian ideas. How about in terms of, of impact? I mean, do you see uh, more ideas of, you know, in, in, on anything, taxation or individual liberty or? Obviously, Ron Paul is having an impact, even though I don't consider him 100% libertarian by any means. But he has brought new people into the movement. He had a bestseller. However, it's my personal belief that the libertarian movement is really not going to go too far forward till they get a better idea of how to appeal to the average person. Because the average person doesn't give a flying handshake about theory or, or Austrian economics. Now, obviously, as libertarians, we don't want to uh, throw our principles out the window, but I think we need to learn how to appeal to the average person. You've dealt a lot with women's issues. I see on Facebook often uh, exercised about women's issues. And just in, in uh, right now, I mean, what, what, would, what could libertarians do to become less of the, you know, the, the man sitting in his panel den kind of party that, uh, or not party, but movement? Well, I, I do think that it's better than it used to be cause, because there are more women involved. But many libertarian men are fairly ignorant about women's issues. Some of them are outright hostile to feminism because they've never bothered to find out what it is. This is the curious thing. Libertarians know better than to believe what they read in the media about libertarianism. But somehow, some of them believe what they read in the media about feminism. Hello, that's not very consistent. It's not critical thinking. What do you think of the, the popular idea, certainly you hear about it a lot uh, in libertarian circles, that Republicans are, we're not Republicans, but they're the more natural allies for libertarians than the Democrats are. Do you think there's anything to that? Not anymore. In the 60s, that might have been true because the Republicans weren't nut jobs in the 60s. Goldwater was perfectly sensible, even though he got a bad rap. But the people now aren't like Goldwater. I mean, we either have the fundamentalists who want to ram their personal moral values down everybody else's throat, or we got people like Romney, who's an opportunist, who will just you know, go whichever way the wind is blowing. And given the influence of the fundamentalists in the Republican Party, I wouldn't go there. In practical political terms, where do you think we are today? Um, you know, we have an election coming up. We have the fight over the individual mandate. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's, uh, see, you know, in actual politics, we're seeing a government trying to get bigger and, and real arguments over the size and role of government. I'm a short-term pessimist and perhaps a long-term optimist. A short-term pessimist because as you say, uh, just every time you turn around, there's so, some new incredible invasion 
of our rights that the founders, who certainly weren't perfect themselves, but nonetheless the founders would have been dumbfounded at and people just go along with it. Uh, so, and there's very dangerous trends because the Democrats want to control us one way and the Republicans want to control us another. And it's gotten more extreme. So in the short run, I'm, I think it's things that are kind of bleak. But in the long run, we have the internet, which is, has already made an impact in terms of letting people have information that will help them to act in a way that may make them freer. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and also, people and societies change. A lot of people, I, I get this constantly on Facebook saying, oh, that'll never happen. 150 years ago, things were much, much different than they are now. Women were very restricted. Um, Victorian uh, moral values were in full force. Now, that just isn't the case. I personally firmly believe that the direction libertarianism in general has to go is to work on creating, sustaining, maintaining, building alternatives. Because we can't just say, government's bad. You know, people, are, people know government's bad, but they say, but what else can we do? We have to show them by example. Because theory is just not going to convince most people. It just isn't. We have to say, here's the way these things have worked, could work, and are now working. Terrific. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Sharon Presley, it's great uh, talking to you. For Reason TV, I am Tim Cavanaugh. Thank you.